we will now discuss uh, maintenance processing and uh, focus on corrective maintenance. So if we look at the diagram here, we first start off with technical structure, and then we create the preventive maintenance plans for it, and then we start them and let them run on their own. Now, ideally in a maintenance scenario, you'll have almost all preventive maintenance, and you should have your preventive maintenance should be so good that you, you don't have any corrective maintenance. But at the same time, you have a limited budget, so your preventive maintenance could only be so much. And uh, it, nothing's ever perfect, so you'll always have corrective maintenance. Uh, depending on the budget that you have and the skill sets you have, the number of engineers and qualified skill trades you have, uh, your, main, your preventive maintenance could run anywhere from 95% of your work orders to about 60% of your work orders. Uh, anything below 60, you should uh, you should uh, reinvest. You should investigate the way you're you're running your maintenance shop and uh, f uh, focus more on your preventive. But uh, Maple Leaf, the average is 80/20, so 20% corrective, 80% preventive. So now for that 20% that happens that is uh, corrective, the way it works is that uh, production supervisors or a mechanic notices a problem on the plant floor. So somewhere in the technical structure, something went wrong. It could be a corrective or it could be general. Now the difference between the two is that corrective means something is down that needs to be fixed immediately in order for production to be back up or is affecting production in some sort of way. And general is that something is happening and something's wrong that would be nice to fix at some point. So one example for a uh, corrective would be a conveyor belt's down or the bread wrapper's broken. The bread wrapper's important in the production line, so you need to fix that immediately. As opposed to um, as opposed to a machine making some sounds. So let's say you have a conveyor belt that's making some noise, is making the workers uncomfortable. It is not stopping production, so that'd be a general maintenance order. And um, so the way it starts is that you first create a notification. So you have your technical structure. Somebody notices a problem, and they create the notification from it. They'll do this via IW21, and then eventually you have so many notifications that you go into IW28 and you look at your list of notifications. From there, the maintenance supervisor or planner decide which ones become work orders, and they turn the notifications into work orders. Once that's done, they'll put hours against it, and then they'll complete the work orders. So let's go and look at SAP now. So here's maintenance, IW21, IW28, IW48. They all need set up beforehand. And then if you need to adjust your work centers with IR01, IR02. So the way we'll start, we'll look at our technical structure. And press execute. And we're going to say something broke down here. Some, we'll say the first thing that broke down is mixer 1 broke down. So going back to our main menu, We'll create a notification for Mixer 1. Our options are N1, N2, N3. But uh, N3 is just a report, but here we're just going to focus on corrective in general. Here's N1. Press Enter. Uh, mixer number 1 is down. We will now look here. This needs to be set up in advance. This needs to be set up. This needs to be set up this needs to be set up. The way this is set up is that you go in here and at first glance it'll look like this. So when you click on the matchbox for function location, when they want to search for function location, it looks like this. You pick function location list and it looks like this and you search and then you pick where you want it to be. You want it to be in the mixing area. In the equipment you do the exact same thing. In this case, it's already set up, so we look for the mixer number one. Mixer number one is down. 
you press enter. This window here, you set this up in configuration. So it's called the object info box. This is done in configuration. And the way this works, it tells you the number of breakdowns currently on it, number of notifications have been created, the orders created, how many have been completed, completed, and how many days has been processed. So this broke it down for the past three days, let's say. Now you could put here the number of notifications you want. You could put that you only want five notifications to show or unlimited number or same thing with uh, orders created or you could show it do not show breakdown report. For now we're going to leave a uh, configuration this way. We're going to leave uh, the way it looks is perfect. And uh, here I'll show you the last active work order and I'll show you the last three notifications within the next the last certain number of days. That's also set up in configuration. You go in configuration it'll tell you if it's seven or fourteen days that you could look at. Um, from here you could look at preventive maintenance. You could schedule the schedule of works coming. All notifications that have ever been created against it, and all work orders that have ever been created against it. You can look at superior technical structure. And you can look at any replacement equipment that is similar. So this is fine, it's just an info box. We know that the last active order is a PM on the 20th of November. It's already created, but it has not been done yet. Enter. Here we pick a work center. So in this case, we're going to pick a. Steve Horton. He's doing the work. I'm going to put this as a priority of a very high priority. And then we could put this as broken down. Broken down means that the, the the machine is down and we record a number of hours it was down and then do further analysis later on in our reports. Here you put notes. Mixer number one is down. Not sure what happened but it is spinning too quickly needs to be looked into most likely motor is out of sync and that's it he's press safe telling you how the broke down is broken down beginning today now we're going to do a general and two now we're going to look at our technical structure we're going to say that the water chiller has something with it wrong with it but it's not an emergency so put the water chiller number here you go water chiller is making funny sounds once again the window here appears the info box it tells you there's been six orders created two notifications created has been broken down once the last active thing is a pm on the 23rd of uh, november and that's it so we press enter through it Water chiller is making a humming sound when someone has time. Please look into this. You pick your worker, we'll put Vlad, put a priority. It's a little priority. And that's it. Press save. Now we're going to go look at a list of notifications. This needs set up. It originally looks like this. It needs to be set up, minimized to look like this. The dates are adjusted here. If you look here, this is how you set up the dates. You click here. You put D, which means dynamic date calculation, and then you put date current 30 days. Here we have to put the planning plant. We go by 2507. We press save, save, save. We press process, I mean execute. And here we go, the open work uh, notifications we have right now for corrective. So right now we have one general and one corrective. The corrective needs to be done right away. So the first thing we do is that we look at the corrective we see the mixers down we made a decision that we want someone to work on this we press create work order this is going to be a corrective work order press enter this is going to be a repair release save 
you press refresh, it's done. Now this is a general work order, so we'll create this. We go here, we're going to put this ZMG1, which is general. It's a nice to have work order. This is a, it's a modification. Press enter, release, save. So there's all your work orders. From here, they're all been done. There's nothing left to do. We highlight them. We go environment, orders. Now we're going to process the work orders. So here's the orders. This first one has been already printed and had its time done. What I'm going to do now, I'm just going to work on the corrective one. The general one I'm not going to do yet. So corrective, I'm going to go print. I print. It's been printed now. And then from here, I'm going to pretend that the hours came back and it's been done. Go order, confirmation collective. I worked on it two hours. It's final. Save, refresh. There we go. These are both done. I highlight them, tickle them. Yes. It's done. I highlight these. They're gone. Only one notification left. So now we're going to do time entry. Go to IW48. Looks like this originally. Looks like this originally. You have to make sure it's released and confirmed. Do not show those. Uh, in French, you have to change the statuses to keep that in mind. Then you press save. Execute. Shows you there's only one work order left to put hours against. I'm going to put one hour against it. I'm going to put final confirmation save so the hours are done so the last thing to work on is uh, work centers if you want to create a new work center we're going to create a new work center here you go IR01 this doesn't happen often but once in a while they will do it then you put your work center we're going to put Ray Raymundo is a work center and then we want to copy one because it has a lot of financial information. So we want them to copy from Vlad. We copy everything here. Press back. All this data here is correct. You put his start date in the past. Let's pretend he started last week, or 18th of October. Then we change his name to Raimundo Dumbler. You press save. He's now part of it. So now he's a new work center. So you create work centers. So if we look here, you have the technical structure, which we started off with here. From here, you create notifications. And then you make them into work orders. You do time entry. You have to make sure there's a work center against it. So once again, we'll go here. Now in here we didn't talk about inputting parts and we didn't talk about uh, managing your parts. That'll be done in inventory. And uh, that concludes maintenance. Maintenance processing. Now we're going to look into the config side of this. So the configuration, when you go IW21, we create these notification types. So There'll be a config video that talks about creating notification types. But you can create the different notification types. From here, the notification type, you make everything that's mandatory. In this case, we made description mandatory. We made a technical object mandatory. We made this object box appear from config. So config is what sets up, do you want this box to appear every time? Or you could always hide it. In this case, we decided to make it up here so people don't duplicate notifications. From here, we'd also made it that the long text here, long text test, will transfer over to any work order created from it. That's also done in configuration. From here, the work center here could transfer from a technical object. We also made it 
the priority setup and configuration. You set up what priority you want for each notification type. Uh, you set up the object info box. You set up which fields you want to appear. Do you want it reported by to appear? Do you want this to appear? Do you want the time to appear? Do you want the breakdown to appear? So all that's there. You can make this disappear. But for now, we're going to keep it the way it is. We do not use any other tabs. The other tabs are all grayed out. You don't really need them. Or if they're not grayed out, they're because they're transferring information from the first tab. So that is it for this. Now, when we look at W28, the configuration is to make this default a certain way, but we're not doing that because we're going to do variants. So there's no configuration needed here. Time entry, we could also does the way this looks. So time entry could be configured to make this look the way it is looking right now, but we're not going to do it. We're doing that via the list, the list edit variants. Same with the following field, the layout, the next screen. Work center, since there's no HR module, module we don't need to do any configuration behind that or any setup. You just create a free text, uh, I mean, uh, a work center on its own. Uh, the other things you could add to this are capacity planning. Capacity planning is not, is not currently um, uh, active for the work centers. Uh, users will have to, uh, Maple Leaf Employee IS BSA will have to go into configuration and set that up. Uh, since it's not currently, currently part of the scope, it won't be talked about these videos. But there's a whole section called capacity planning or capacity. And from capacity, it deals with the work centers and it deals with setting them up in order to have a better scheduling of your work orders. One more thing to note is that if you create a notification uh, broken mixer number two we're gonna go here look do the search execute mixer number two yes Vlad put a priority mixer number two is down please fix. We press save. Here's two notifications. I'm going to process it right from here. You can do it right from here. I call this corrective priority. I call this a repair. We put planned hours here, which I didn't talk about. One takes five. Not yet planned hours. You release it, save it, refresh, highlight, go to orders. Here's your orders. You could highlight, go to operations. And then here it tells you the worker. So there's five hours scheduled for Vlad on this day. So there's five hours of Vlad's time. You could rearrange the scheduling here. And uh, once again, this is IW37. This is also preset. It should already preset as a as a layout default layout for every user. But if there's a problem, you go in there and adjust this. And um, that's the scheduling. That concludes a uh, maintenance processing.